the college football experience, college football rivalries episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Shady Rays. Go to shadyrays.com and use the promo code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. And when you do that, remember as always to let it ride, baby. Hey, what's up? You degenerate gamblers. This is bill Burr and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. rivalries episode that I wanted to touch base. I maybe think this episode is going to be dull. I don't know, but uh, I wanted to dive into what I think the sport should be. Uh, We'll talk more about that in a second, but maybe you're wondering just who the hell you are listening to. Well, my name is Colby swinging Dan to base dad, AKA pick Don D that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet speaks with his fists and lives by his wits when dundee happened he was a superstar i'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping we killed a normal man but uh, now that's gone the medical advice i got from that was was like being hit by lightning pretend it never happened and get on with your life and you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. <laughs> oh, yes. It's great to be talking football. I watched the Boise State spring game. Saw some of that BYU spring game. Things are going good. We got football. Yes. And you know, I'm going to be breaking it down. If you're new to the college football experience, we're going to do a solo podcast on all 133 FBS teams. We're going to have a bunch more content in the middle of our week by week draft with Patty C and NC Nick. Uh, we So we previewed week zero and week one. Go listen to those episodes. We got week two this Wednesday. We will break down. And we'll get to every single team in the land, but also we're going to have some NFL draft stuff coming, uh, including, uh, you know, top lawn chairs in the draft. If you've been listening to uh, us for a while, you'll know what that means, but also just a lot of great content Uh, for this particular episode. I wanted to uh, shout out to the chat, see the chat rolling along. Shout out to James and Dustin and Mexi Melton, Dick Gertzberger. Once again, you can watch this folks on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience, subscribe, tell a friend. Cause we are talking college football five days a week. Now we are in the thick of it. Let's go. Um, Dustin Weezer in the chat saying Paul Bunyan's ax. They should actually cut down the, uh, the goalpost. Amen. I'm on board with that. I am on board with that. Let's go. Um, no, but this episode, I wanted to talk a lot about rivalry. So we're at this like critical crossroads uh, in, in the history of college football, I would say right now, which by the way, you know, a lot of people think major league baseball is the oldest pastime that we have. It's actually college football. Major league baseball started in 1871, where the sport of college football first played its first game in 1869 folks. So if you're in a little argument and someone say, well, I appreciate the pastime now baseball as a sport went on before that, but not the MLB. So, uh, college football is the oldest like league that we have as far as sports go in this country that I, that I, I know of at least. Um, and, and I think it's important. I think a lot of the, uh, the great traditions in co- the, what makes your average college football fan of a fan of college football is the, the traditions, the history, the rivalries. Um, and we're kind of at this crossroads where we have TV execs that have came into the sport and redirected a lot of conferences a lot of history. Um, and I wanted to make the case if we're going to do this correct. Cause uh, I, I, during, it was funny during super bowl week, 
I uh, heard an NFL exec talking about college football finally getting their shit together as far as the playoffs and how he thinks that uh, the sport could be a lot more marketable as far as is long term with more with with 12 team playoffs or whatever they end up going to you know in the future 16 whatever but that all of a sudden with each power 5 conference getting a bid they're finally getting their shit together and they expect like monster numbers to follow that right which is somewhat true. I mean, I've lobbied for a larger playoff for a long, long time. Shit. Since I've been alive, really, since I've been watching my, <laughs> my first college football game, I was like, huh, why aren't they playing each other? Right. Why isn't there uh, you know, an auto bid on the line here, but at the same time we've seen, so that, that seems to be a positive for the sport in, in certain avenues, but the negative side of it is you don't see a lot of these great rivalries. They're kind of getting destroyed by TV execs that have no knowledge of the sport or, or, or maybe they don't just, they, they don't care perhaps. So what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do would be to take a look. If we're going to reroute this thing on what we should have, uh, or like basically college football and college basketball. One of the things about it is it's always kind of been unorganized from conference to conference. So if we are organizing this thing, you know, more and more, I, I would hope that they would, you know, go all the way, not just go half ass it. And basically what I did first was, you know, I, I want the same amount of P five games per team. Like if we're going to do this, if we're going to do this, like, Hey, your fi- you, you know, your auto bids are only in the power five conferences right now. Well then I think we should all play the same amount of power fives, the se- you know, decide whether you want to go FCS or not. I think that's a, uh, an argument they always say as well, you know, Alabama, you know, when they play Western Carolina, that, that, uh, you know, is great for the ecosystem for Western Carolina, uh, Western Carolina football to stay alive. I mean, I kind of think some of that is bullshit and I think the FCS should get more organized to try to get more games on national television, meaning play weekday games, stuff like that. Cause I think there's a, uh, I think they could be very successful if they did that. But if we're going to do that, which I'm all on board in preserving football at all the lower levels, um, I I think it needs to be unified. You know what I mean? I I feel like we should have some type of of unity there of saying, okay, well, instead take my Colorado team last year. Look, Colorado was awful last year, one and 11, but do I really think they were one and 11? No, I think they played 11 power fives. And then they played a 10 win air force team. So when you do that, I think that uh, is ridiculous to compare that to another school's schedule, you know, and and I can use other examples too. So I think, I think uh, that's something we'll talk about uh, on this episode, but before I dive into, to what I want to, what I want to say, as far as like what rivalry week should really look like and help us organize the sport more. I want to tell you, that the college football experience is brought to you by shady rays. <clears throat> yes. I mean, shady rays. What's going on right now? You guys are just killing it. Um, look, kick off the new year with uh, new gear built to last. Our friends at shady rays have you uh, covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and much, much more. Uh, Shady Rays is an independent sunglass company that offers a world-class product. And it's just as good as any pair of sunglasses you've ever worn. They got durable frames. They got extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most, and and I really mean this, the most insane protection in all of eyewear because every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. Um, yes. Let's say you're at the backyard brawl pit, West Virginia. One of the greatest things we have in college football and you're there and you're just having a good, when I went to Morgantown, I got fucking pepper sprayed for no reason. I wasn't even part of this, this incident that happened, but the cop just said, or the security officer just said, let me spray the shit out of 50 people. Let's say that happens to you're at, you're in Morgantown because wild things happen in Morgantown. You're at, you're catching the backyard brawl. And all of a sudden a fight breaks out next to you. Some guy's pissed drunk and he mixes up, 
you know, his, uh, you know, the guy he's supposed to be punching for, for you. And he punches you right in the fucking face, even though you had nothing to do with it, which is possible. So I've seen it happen. It's happened to me before, actually. Um, and, you know, boom, your glass is broken just like that. You're upset. Normally, hey, man, that'd be two hundred dollars. You owe me one hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. No, no, not with Shady Rage. You just go back and say, look, these bro- these glasses broke. And they're like, oh, well, let me get you that. You know, let me get you that replacement. Boom. They got you covered. What a offer. What a deal that they give you here. So if you lose or break a pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair of the same glasses. No questions asked. You can wear your shady rays with confidence because they have your back long, long after your purchase. And with shady rays, you can look good and you can feel good because they have donated over 20 million meals to fight hunger with feeding America. So, you know, their heart is in the right place, folks. Uh, if you don't love them, you can always exchange a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with shady rays. Their team always has your back and right now exclusively for our listeners. Uh, shady rays is giving out the best deal of the year. Go to shadyrays.com. Use the, the promo code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the Shady Rated or Sh- Shady Rays rated five stars by over 200,000 people. That's a lot. That's a lot. Let's go. Uh, all right, we're back talking college football rivalry. So what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to uh, try to organize the sport on what I think we should do. If TV execs are calling the shots, what they're going to what the what, they're, what they should learn and you know, maybe maybe I'm I'm full of shit here, but I'm saying like they should learn that normally your rivalry games are going to bring in some of the biggest numbers. Ohio State, Michigan is is huge rivalry brings in a huge number every year. The Iron Bowl, Alabama, Auburn brings in a huge number every year, right? Uh, Army, Navy brings in a pretty good number every fucking year. Uh, so with those being the, the test and, and you'll see it now that they've, they've ruined some of these, but I think when Texas, Texas A&M comes back, you'll see that get a gigantic number, uh, much better than, you know, who was it? Texas Baylor ending the season or something previously. It's going to destroy that. Now, some of that is Texas, some of that is Texas A&M, but it's also a, a historic rivalry that needs it. We saw West Virginia Pitt draw a really big number last year, week one. Oh, I, at what point will TV execs learn even though they're in different conferences, maybe we should, if they're calling the shots, maybe we should plug those two teams together more often. So what I'm proposing is, and I'll have you join, join in on this. Uh, feel free in the chat to drop your favorite rivalries and what you think. I think there should be unity as far as first off the final week of the season rivalry week. I have gone through all 133 teams here and lined up who I think they should be playing in those games. Right. Uh, also I, I, you know, many schools have multiple rivals, you know, like Michigan plays Michigan state and Ohio state. Obviously Ohio state's the bigger one. You end the season with the Ohio state. Cause it's one of the most watched games, if not the most watched game every fucking year. But I want to, to try to get organized Halloween weekend, in my opinion, should be where your, your essentially your second rivalry week should be. Your first rivalry week should be Thanksgiving weekend. There that whole Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Even for those Maxon schools, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so here's what I put together. I, I put together who I think their rival should be. Now, I also believe if they're going to all agree, you know, to the same set of scheduling rules, which I don't know that that's happening, but I've heard that been tossed around down the line here. Then if we keep an FCS, I have ideas for which FCS that should be. I have ideas for what group of five that should be. And if TV execs are truly calling the shots, I would love to see some matchups that never happen that are in state because schools never want them scheduled. You know what I mean? Like there was a long time. Texas was ducking Houston. Thank, thankfully we get it this year, right? Because that's fertile recruiting ground and they don't want a chance that they lose to Houston, but you know, maybe in the future we'll see that more. Who knows? Uh, another one is Arkansas, Arkansas state. That's one that actually in the state legislature, they can't play one another, which is ridiculous. How's our, if our Arkansas state could rise up some, if they would pl- be able to play Arkansas, it's ridiculous that they can't right. 
And I actually think they would draw a bigger number than say Arkansas playing what North Texas or whatever, whatever, uh, you know, random, r- random at a, uh, at a conference game against a, a group of five. So stuff like that, Tennessee, I feel like often, uh, oftentimes doesn't want Memphis on the schedule. It's fertile recruiting ground. Same, same situation with the Texas Houston thing. So those are some things that I want to talk about, but first let's talk about the most important week in my opinion of the year and what's really been missing in my opinion, in, in, in the sport, so to speak with, with some of the rivalries being altered to early in the year. Was it great to see the backyard brawl last year? Sure. I always want to see them play, right? But it's not the same to me all the way as catching the game in September when there's no like gigantic stakes on the line. Now I know that, you know, they're in different conferences now. One, you know, West Virginia's in the big 12, Virginia, uh, uh, Pittsburgh's in the ACC, but that doesn't mean you can't make that happen the final week of the year. And then playoff stakes will be on the line. Seeding will be on the line. Conference championship appearances will be on the line. And that makes it way more compelling. So, and shout out to Dustin. He says, I'm a Wisconsin guy. And I always love the USC Notre Dame game. Uh, I do too, but you know, you have a situation. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But first let me just fire away on what I had as what I think our final regular season should be uh, like the final week of the regular season should be. All right. Let's start off. Arkansas. We're starting. Well, let's start with the SEC. Actually, I can go alphabetically too, but let, let's go. Uh, let's go SEC. Arkansas. I got them playing LSU the final week of the season. Now, this recently LSU has played Texas A and M, and actually some of the games have been fucking great. But A and M and Texas are now in the same conference. We're getting Texas, Texas A and M, and once again, it should be on Thanksgiving Thursday like it was before, or you know Black Friday mornings. Um, that is a great gain. That's going to happen regardless of my pr- projections here. I think that's happening, you know, for real. And that one's going to be a smash. College football is getting stronger with that rivalry getting back. So I put Arkansas LSU and I think these two teams kind of are, are, you know, in a way that they're, they're not, that's not a huge rivalry game, but I think it's enough of a rivalry. Remember Houston nut fucked up their season when they had McFadden. Uh, I don't remember what year that was but they've had some classic games over the years. I think you go Arkansas LSU, the final week of the, uh, of the season. And I think fans should still be happy with that. You're right there, Louisiana, Arkansas, you know, from a, from a uh, mileage standpoint, it still kind of makes sense. Um, Let's hop on over to Alabama. Obviously we're not changing the fucking iron bowl. Alabama and Auburn is like the, arguably the best game of the year. And that's another reason. What I mean is like West Virginia Pitt playing on week one last year. Like I said, great to have the rivalry back, but it's still not the same. Go back to that LaShawn McCoy year with Dave wants. That is the coach rich rod undefeated undefeated about to play in the national championship game. And what, and Pitt pulls off the upset of a, of a fucking lifetime for Pitt fans. They'll remember that when they're 90, right? And they get that done these games that happen at the end of the year, the kick six, the Davis return, right? Colorado ruining Nebraska's season in, in, in 2000, they're about to play for the natty, right? Um, we can go on and on and on about the final week of the season. And these rivalries normally they're, they're great games because of they get up even like a, a five and seven team or something like Pitt was whatever Pitt was that year. They get up and those, and, and, and to me, it makes these, it adds this to the stakes and it makes these rivalries even more prolific. So you can't touch Auburn and Alabama. That's gotta be there. That's like, you could argue that's the best rivalry in college football. And I, I don't even know that I would be opposed to it. Cause I mean, to me, army, Navy, Michigan, uh, Ohio state, all right there. You gotta have that one still. So then you jump down and you talk about, uh, the next one, Florida, Florida state. You don't touch that. You don't touch that. That's fantastic. I know it hasn't been as great as far as a ranking standpoint lately, but you know, go back to the nineties and early two thousands. You had some, even like, like as far as like 2010, I think you had some big time matchups. You had some big time matchups. That game speaks for itself. Great fucking rivalry, right? 
Um, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Obviously, Georgia Tech has been awful lately, and this game will be a blowout, probably for the foreseeable future. But it wasn't that long ago that Georgia Tech was giving them games. And shit, I remember I interviewed a uh, former Georgia off uh, defense alignment in the past past year. I interviewed him. Now he played, I think he graduated in like 16 or 17. If memory serves me correct. Um, maybe even a little bit before that shout out to Toby Johnson. And he was saying, you know, my biggest regret is Georgia tech. And Paul Johnson beat us. I think it was two out of four years. If memory serves me correct, but at least beat him on his senior day. Right. That rivalry. I think you still protect. I think you still protect it as, as I know it's been like 65, nothing lately, but Hey, both teams have won national championships in our lifetime. Obviously Georgia, you know, back to back and then Georgia tech in 90. So I still think it'll come back around. some. Georgia tech needs to get their shit together though. Um, so you keep that. I, I mean, to be honest with you, the, the sec, you really kind of keep most of what is there. Uh, Kentucky obviously has Louisville. That's an ACC sec thing. Just like South Carolina and Clemson. I think you protect those, keep those going. Um, the only real ones I think I struggled with here in the sec was I still did Vandy, Tennessee, even though I feel like Tennessee should schedule Memphis, even though we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about the the G fives and what they should do. If you're going to get organized and you're trying to boost your TV ratings, um, Missouri was the one I struggled with. Missouri was the one that I could not really find a home for. Um, obviously you got the egg bowl, Mississippi, Mississippi state Thanksgiving every year. That's fantastic. Don't fucking don't, don't get rid of anything. Don't, don't touch anything there. Um, you have Vandy, Tennessee, um, which sucks, but Vandy's actually been competitive over the past 15 years with Tennessee. So I think you, 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 you don't change that. Um, but Missouri is kind of the odd man out here. You got Texas, Texas, A&M, Oklahoma is also the odd man out. Oklahoma. Well, first off, I think if you let a couple years go, because I know Oklahoma state said, no, we will not schedule Oklahoma. you you fucked us with that, you know, leaving the big 12 and they're super mad. And I understand it. I understand the animosity. However, if you can, if TV execs are in charge, which we know that to be, they got to find a way to make bedlam happen. Just get these guys in a fucking room and make them agree because I, I think you'll get your best TV rating uh, short of Oklahoma playing, you know, Texas, right. Which, which you could, which you can't do because uh, Texas is playing Texas A&M. So I say Oklahoma, Oklahoma state play, just like we see Georgia play Georgia tech, South Carolina, play Clemson, Louisville, play Kentucky. Let a couple of years go on this. When that contract comes up in what? 34, 35, whatever it says, that that's where all this radical change is going to happen, even though it's already happening now. Shit. I mean, USC and UCLA are in the big 10 starting next year. I think TV execs make that happen. Oklahoma, Oklahoma state, which then means what do you do with the Missouri game? You could pair Oklahoma with Missouri. If you cannot, if you cannot get bedlam back on, on, you know, on the field, which I still believe everyone's got to figure TV execs can make that shit happen. Right. Then you do Oklahoma, Missouri, but if not, then Missouri is the team that you just like, what do we do? Everyone's got a rival except Missouri. So I actually paired Missouri with another conference and that is, well, I guess I'll get to it. Let's hop on over to the big 12, but before I hop on over to the big 12, yeah, Dustin's in the chat saying Missouri and Illinois. True, but then that would ruin one of Illinois's longtime rivals uh, on Rivalry Week. But I, I, I would not be opposed to that. Um, but hang on, before I get to that, I want to tell you folks out there that the college football experience is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, Underdog Fantasy is a great place to get down on fantasy and player props all year long. Underdog Fantasy has some of your your favorite MLB, NHL, NBA daily games. Plus, they've been doing a best ball draft for the 2023 NFL season. You can even play XFL uh, fantasy over there. So head over to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code SGPN for 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. Um, 
All right. We're back on the college basketball experience. And uh, yeah, I mean, so let's, let's, I, and I'm curious your guys thoughts. I, I see in the chat, Missouri, Illinois talk, obviously that was a big time rivalry for a long time. I would love to see that back to me. That should be the Halloween weekend, right? Well, I mean, if you can make it work, the final game of the year, but I don't think that'll happen because Illinois has their set rival that they've been playing for a long time in Northwestern. Um, let's, let's talk though. Let's talk uh, the next conference here. Big 12. All right. Obviously you have this new, uh, this new big 12 uh, once Texas and Oklahoma leave after this season. So it, this one's the hardest stretch I would say, because you got to make bedlam happen. Like I just alluded to. It's going to take, going to need a couple of years for that to cool off, figure it out, make it happen. Uh, Baylor, Texas tech have been rivals. That one's no problem. Boom. Good Baylor, Texas tech in there. That is no problem. Cincinnati is, is brand new. UCF is brand new. BYU is brand new. Houston is brand new. Tough. Here's what I'm proposing though, is that, okay. You keep your, your Kansas, Kansas state should be the final week of the season. I know sometimes they've done K state, Iowa state, Farmageddon. No, I think it should be Kansas, Kansas state. Keep it in state for the final game. Was that the sunflower? Keep that one for the final games of uh, the final game of the season. Make Farmageddon the game on uh, on Halloween weekend. But where do you put Iowa state? Well, we'll talk about that. Where do you put Cincinnati? Where do you, well, we'll talk about that. Where do you put Houston? Right. Um, some of the other ones that I had that I jotted down. So Kansas, Kansas state, Oklahoma state. We make that thing happen with Oklahoma BYU. We have to get the Holy war back. TV execs have to do this. This is the, like, this is one of the best rivalries in college football. As far as like hatred for another school, we have to find out a way to end the season with Utah and BYU. I know Utah will probably be in the Pac-12, but there's a chance that Utah could be in the Big 12 too, especially with this Pac-12 TV deal that just seems to never be happening. So if we can find a way, if TV execs are smart, because this is going to bring in a much higher rating than pairing BYU with any other team, I guarantee that, right? They're going to find that out the hard way because they're going to play at some point and then they're going to realize, hey, wait, this number did this or BYU UCF only did that. It makes sense. People want to see this game. Um, so there's that, but I couldn't, I, I struggled to find, you know, where do we, what do we do with Cincinnati? Because could they play West Virginia? Sure. But I think that should be the Halloween weekend. I think Halloween weekend, because it's in conference, Cincinnati, West Virginia, they're right. They're not that far from one another. And that can, I historically, I know it's not like a gigantic rivalry, but it could develop into that because they're so close. I think uh, the one to me that stood out and I, so I, I basically went through all 133 of these, right? And I came down to like 10 to 12 remaining schools where I didn't know what to do with. So then I came up with this. I was like, okay, well, Iowa state used to play Missouri. They played a fucking ton of times every single year, big eight. Then they became the big 12. They're not far from one another. They should find out a way to get this thing on the field. Just like the Louisville, Kentucky. If the ACC could figure out how to work with the sec with Florida, Florida state, South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia tech, Georgia, Louisville, and Kentucky, and damn it. The big 12 can too. All right. So the big 12 should figure out bedlam and figure out Iowa state, Missouri final game of the season. Now, Cincinnati, Houston, UCF, all were tough for me to, uh, to work out. So what I did with UCF is I kept them playing South Florida. You can't have them play Florida or Florida state because that's, that's a rivalry. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't think Miami would be okay with you play, but that would be an interesting one right there. Cause look, Florida state, Miami is a great rivalry, but if Florida, Florida state's that weekend, you play Florida, Florida, St I'm sorry. You play Miami, Florida state Halloween weekend. And then on the final week of the season, UCF Miami, it, if they would, if they would do that, I'd be all on board, but I don't know that they will. So then I think you do UCF South Florida. If not, 
that to me is a good rivalry. That's, you know, they've had classic games over the past decade or so. Now it's still young in their rivalry, but uh, obviously that is something that I think could be appealing. Now, another one you could do Cincinnati kind of the odd man out. I thought about pairing Cincinnati with Miami, Ohio, because they have a, a very historic rivalry, but I feel like these power five schools should probably be ending the season with other power five schools. So I paired them with Houston, the old AFC central Bengals, Oilers rivalry, Glanville Weish. I don't know. I, I think that's the biggest leap that I have when I was filling this out on all 133 teams, final games, right? So what do we do with that? I think you just let that one build and maybe it turns into something. It might be shit. I'm not sure. Tell me your thoughts in the chat. I see Clark in the chat saying Houston and Baylor are closer than Baylor and Texas tech. Houston and Baylor will happen naturally. That's an interesting point. So then what do you do with Texas tech though? Texas tech, Cincinnati they have the same fucking uniforms. Texas tech's kind of the odd man. I mean, one of those teams is going to be stuck playing someone they, they traditionally probably haven't been playing. I mean, yes, I guess theoretically Houston and Houston and Texas tech have played for a long time, but I'm saying, well, Baylor and Texas tech have two. Um, I don't know. Cincinnati, Houston, a little AAC rivalry. Dustin Weiser says, yeah, I mean, that's what they, they have a little bit of that history. They got the old <clears throat> AFC central shit going on. Houston Oilers, Cincinnati Bengals had a great rivalry in the eighties or nineties. Look, I understand this is one that I'm like, I'm stretching this one. This one is, I don't know. I would love to pair Houston with somebody else, but I don't, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe UTSA is the answer. I don't know. You get a little San Antonio, Texas, uh, or sorry, sorry, San Antonio, Houston rivalry. They've been playing of late, but I, I, that's the only stretch I will say. Let, now the big 10 pretty much stays the big 10 to me, right? The big 10 you do uh, all their programs pretty much have great rivalries. The only difference is, is we get rid of Nebraska, Iowa. They can play that. They, they can play that one on Halloween weekend because I want all the better rival, the second best rivals on Halloween weekend. Cause that look, they're not going to move the red river shootout because it's the Texas fair state fair and the Cyhawk trophy, Iowa, Iowa state. So unfortunately those rivalry games, you know, I, I'm not terribly upset that we don't have to move those ones because the history there is so strong. Right. But uh, the big 10. So you got, what is it? Illinois Northwestern final game of the season battle of, of Illinois. Essentially. Now I know the chat was recommending that, uh, you know, Missouri and Illinois, I'd be okay with that. If Illinois, if the big 10 would move Illinois Northwestern to, to uh Halloween weekend. But to me, if they want to get organized and structure both those weekends, Halloween weekend and the final weekend of the season as your huge rivalry weekends. Yes. I know you might have some other, some other decent rivals going on there, you know, throughout the season, because sometimes teams have four or five rivals, but the main two, those two weekends, I think it'd be fantastic for the health of the sport personally. Um, then you have uh, so other big 10 teams, Indiana plays Purdue. It's actually, it's actually a fun rivalry. I, I don't touch it. It's fine. Michigan, Ohio state, arguably the best rivalry in sports, right? Um, but then it kind of leaves you out Michigan state. They're kind of like, a, uh, they don't really have, they've been trying to line them up with Penn state. Iowa doesn't have the Nebraska angle. Cause we put Nebraska, Colorado back. And I think you'll see it this year when Nebraska, Colorado play. And next year they also play their ratings are going to be, I think pretty damn good. Deion Sanders, Matt rule. I think there's an excitement in both programs. And I think TV execs, despite the fact that the PAC 12 or whatever, whatever conference Colorado ends up in the, the big 12 the PAC 12 and Nebraska is going to be in the big 10 still. So I think the TV execs are going to say what well, this drew a gigantic number. We got to make this happen more, right? Boom. But just make it happen the final week of the season. Like it used to there's something great about it. The mountain town against, against, you know, the, the flatlands of Nebraska, they border each other. And they have uh, a shit ton of history and that with your final game of the season, move the Iowa Nebraska game. If you want 
to 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 Halloween, even though I would still say, I mean, because yeah, you know, you're probably not gonna be able to make the Oklahoma game happen too. But I don't know. Then, then you still have Iowa. What are you gonna do with Iowa? What are you gonna do with Michigan State? What are you gonna do with Penn State? Well, that those are three schools you can keep the a you can keep the Penn State Michigan State game going, even though I I kind of feel like that feels like a forced rivalry, right? I would love Penn State to play Pitt. But we already end the season with Pitt, West Virginia. And I guess that's one I forgot with the Big 12. West Virginia, Pitt's got to happen again. Final week of the season. Make it happen. Make it happen. All right. I want to see the Big 12, you know, go, Brett Yormark getting out there, challenging the SEC and ACC. If the ACC, SEC can do this thing, they should be able to do it and, and figure out a way to get it done. Backyard brawl should happen every year. Pitt, Penn State. I would love that to be Halloween weekend every single year, every single year. Um, but I don't really know what to do with Penn State in the final game of the season. Penn State, Michigan State, Penn State, Iowa, Iowa, Michigan State. I kind of think Iowa, Michigan State makes the most sense because of the history there. So let's put let's pencil in Iowa, Michigan State final game of the season every year, right? I don't think that's too big of a stretch. I actually feel like that should probably actually fucking happen. Um, you have Rutgers. Well, I mean the birthplace of college football, but kind of, kind of don't really, uh, don't really have a home for Rutgers. You could pair Penn state with Rutgers. They battle over recruiting. Not really. I mean, Rutgers loses in recruiting, but Penn state's roster normally has a bunch of guys from Jersey, Pennsylvania. Uh, Rutgers rosters got a lot of guys from Pennsylvania. Jersey, you know, so that's an interesting one you could do. It's kind of one-sided. So may I propose that Penn state Penn state remain out there and we pair Rutgers back with an old big East foe every single year. They have them on the schedule. Anyway, they put, they schedule this game all the time. Anyway, against temple. I know. Would we be giving a P five, a group of five? Yes, but it's fucking Rutgers. All right. Rutgers temple every year. They're not far apart. It, they just fit. They fit. There's a long history. They've been playing ball for a long time. Load them up every single year. Final week of the season. I don't think many people will be excited unless you went to these schools, but I just feel like it fits. The shoe fits. Curious your thoughts on Rutgers temple in the chat. Shout out to Mexi Mount. Are we uh, just inevitably going to have four major conferences with like 20 teams in each? Then just every other team is independent. I don't think so, Mexi Mount, but I mean, I think you'll have this. The other smaller conferences will form conferences. I, I still think, you know, uh, I read an article actually today that like, or maybe it was yesterday that the. Uh, you know, the mountain West president said like, if San Diego, they're expecting potentially San Diego state, Fresno state and Boise to be gone, maybe, you know, potentially down the road. Um, and if that happens, they have a, a contingency plan of like a trying to get in potentially to Texas to get uh, Sam Houston state, UTEP uh, or, or uh, Sam Houston state, UTEP, or I think it was UTSA, but I don't know that UTSA would leave the AAC for the, uh, for the mountain West, but those would, that that's one. And the other ones would be the Montana schools, Montana and Montana state, which I think would be awesome additions to the mountain West. Um, but I think the conferences will stay, but yes, I think we are headed for a spot where three or four super, it might just be three might be four. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I kind of think the pac 12, uh, stepping outside of what we're talking about right now, I kind of think the pac 12's time zone saves itself. Some, <laughs> I know the PAC 12, you could say, man, they're in trouble right now, but, and I understand they're probably not going to get the number. They're definitely not going to get the number they had with UCLA and USC, but shit changes. You know what I mean? Like if, if, uh, if they're able to go out and get San Diego state, I don't know, SMU and who knows, maybe they add Fresno and Boise too. I have no, I have no idea. UNLV. I don't know if they hit those markets. Someone's got to win those games. Then you build your own culture. And yet that builds viewership um, to give you an idea. Like, like Dion's at Colorado. There's a buzz about Colorado. Now I imagine that TV number is going to be fantastic. You go back to the nineties, like Colorado, Nebraska was drawing some of the biggest numbers for the whole season. So shit changes. 
But what saves it is the, the, the time zone. It's not like the ACC where they're battling the SEC and Big Ten on the same time zone. What kind of saves the Mountain West and the, the Pac-12 in a way is the fact there's no other games to be on at that hour. And someone's got to fill that time zone. So it almost increases their value than, than it should be, if that makes sense. I'm not saying that like any school in the Pacific time zones value is probably higher than what it would be because of that, because of the time zone, because they can't compete with, you're not going to put a fucking game in, in Orlando, Florida on at 1 AM, you know, or, or whatever, 11 AM or 11 PM. So it kind of saves itself. So I think, yeah, you're probably right with four. Um, back to my, back to my, 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 my sheet here. Cause I think I did a great job on this. They did a great job on this. <clears throat> the big 10. And by, by the way, I guess I jumped all around the big 12. So going back to the big 12, West Virginia pit. I forgot to mention that we make that happen. We make that thing fucking happen. Um, now you could do this. You could do this. TCU, you could align with Houston. Instead, I put TCU versus SMU, the final game of the year. They're separated by 15 miles. They have the, the iron skillet that they, they battle for every single year. Historic fucking rivalry. And SMU is rumored to be the next like expansion to either the big 12 or Pac 12. I don't think I, like, I think in the next five to 10 years, SMU will be a power five school. So it's not like a group of five for today. It's a group of five, but I don't, I don't think that'll be the same thing. SMU spends too much money. They care too much about football, right? They're going to end up in the power five, wherever it is. Even the fucking ACC might be interested. I don't know, but they're going to end up in the power five. So I think that rivalry is awesome. And there's a big ass trophy. It's fantastic. They hate each other. TCU stole Sonny Dykes from SMU. The animosity is, is at a, is, is at a great level there. So I say, keep that on the, uh, you know, I know you could play it on Halloween weekend and then do TCU Houston, but uh, no, I say, I say you line up uh TCU SMU final game of the season every year. Then, uh, so back to the big, the, the big 10, I went through all of them there. So we have Penn state. You keep Wisconsin, Minnesota, that, that rivalry is fun. You keep, you add Iowa, Michigan state, which I know, you know, I know it's not like the biggest rivalry within the big 10, but they've been playing together for a long fucking time. So it makes sense. It makes sense. Penn state's the odd man out. What do you do with Penn state? We got to talk about this, but before, so just keep that, keep that nugget because let's jump over to the ACC. The ACC kind of has their shit already figured out too. I mentioned Florida playing Florida state. I mentioned Georgia playing Georgia tech. I mentioned South Carolina playing Clemson and Louisville playing Kentucky. Those are all fantastic. Virginia, Virginia tech ends every year. That's fantastic. Commonwealth cup, North Carolina ends the season with NC state every year. Keep it, keep it intact. Duke wake. Love it. Smaller private schools, North Carolina end the season with that every year. Syracuse. What do you do with them? Well, Boston college, simple two schools that recently haven't cared much about football. Hopefully they get back into it because they've been playing for fucking over a hundred years. Final game of the year pit. We know what we're doing with them. We're not playing an ACC school. We're playing a big 12 school, West Virginia. Boom. Figure that out. Uh, that remains that then what else do we have? We have, I'm trying to think right now. What am I missing? Miami. Miami's the one where you say, well, Miami, Florida state's one of the best rivalries in college football, but because Florida state has another great rivalry, Florida final game of the season, you must move Miami, Florida, uh, Florida state to ha Halloween weekend. So Miami's out there. Penn state's out there. What are you going to do? Right. Let me make sure I write this down. Miami Penn state, right? Let's hop on over. I think that's all the ACC schools, right? Georgia tech covered all of them. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure right there. Virginia, Virginia Tech, yeah, Louisville. Yeah. Okay. So then let's hop on over to the Pac 12. Pac 12. Remember, we've already rewrote the rivalries. Like the Holy War's got to happen. Utah's playing BYU. Don't care what you say. Colorado, Nebraska. Put that shit back. 
TV numbers. If TV execs are in charge, these will draw bigger ratings than your other fucking proposed games. All right. Then you have Arizona, Arizona state that sells itself. It's a fun, the dust bowl. I like to call it. Um, that one's all awesome. USC is an interesting one. I, I, the chat was mentioning before USC and Notre Dame should play every year. I, I, I'm, I'm against that actually. I mean, they should play every year, put this one, put USC, Notre Dame, Halloween weekend, every year, Halloween weekend, USC should end the season with UCLA every single year. They're the two teams go into the big 10. So you can still salvage that without any, you know, sit network execs sitting down with other schools, you know, so, and that, and I actually think there's a decent chance that this happens naturally when they jump to the big 10, right? Have that as your final battle of Los Angeles, your final week. Fantastic. But then it, 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 what do you do with Notre Dame? Right. And UCLA, a lot of years would play Cal the final week. Well, that they moved up Cal Stanford. One thing that benefits from this departure is Cal Stanford can now be moved back to the, to the, to rivalry week, because let's be honest. I know people don't really care about Cal Stanford, but they should, because it's a fucking great rivalry. One of the best rivalries, one of the, the in my opinion, the greatest ending to a fucking football game ever, but also it, they're just perfect for each other. You got like the, the, the super private school pussies against, you know, the public school snobs. It's just perfect. It's a perfect rivalry. Final week of the season. Put it on there. All right. Put it on there. Notre Dame. So you, now you have net, net, So now what, what are you going to do with Notre Dame? Notre Dame's the odd man out, right? Cause they don't have the USC thing. Um, so Miami, Penn state, Notre Dame, all in that mix right there. We don't know what the fuck we're doing with them. What other pack? We got the apple cup. That's amazing. Washington, Washington state. Don't touch it. Don't fuck with it. The civil war. No, no, no. That's amazing. Oregon, Oregon state. Don't touch it. It's fucking perfect. All right. Um, if, if the possibility is that, that they add San Diego state, which I think is actually inevitable, you still pair them with Fresno. They're two. They're, they're so similar. San Diego state and Fresno got to go together. They got to fucking go together. Um, okay. So, so you basically have those three schools that kind of, you kind of just don't know what the fuck you're doing with them. But let's hop on over and talk uh, the group of five now. All right. AAC, the new AAC, which is just, you know, this is where it gets a little tricky. When you're filling this out, I feel like the power five is really fucking easy. You get to the group of five and you're like, oh, shit, what am I doing here? Right. Um, for the AAC, you have, uh, what was the first school now in the new AAC? That would be Charlotte, I believe. The 49ers. Okay. I paired them with Georgia State. I know most of you people are going to say, I don't care about this game, right? You don't care now. Well, maybe in 50 years, right? Both these teams started their football programs around the same time, right? They both hadn't had football programs, you know, or Charlotte, I think, might have, but they got rid of it a long time ago, right? They recently, in the past like 15 years, started their football programs. They're perfect to play each other. Charlotte to Atlanta, two big cities. Let's go. Let's go. Um, then you hop on over to uh, East Carolina. See, obviously I I'm an ECU guy would love to see NC state, but NC state's playing North Carolina. <clears throat> and to be honest, NC state's probably going to be playing a uh, uh, wake for the Halloween weekend. So maybe you start the season with the ECU NC state, right? But ECU has a long history with, well, I thought maybe Southern Miss, but no, then I said, Marshall, you got the whole incident, obviously the plane crash situation, but they've been playing for a long fucking time. ECU Marshall to end the season. Marshall would love to be playing West Virginia, but they can't since West Virginia is playing Pitt on the final game of the season. But I do think we should force West Virginia and Marshall to play more on the fucking field. Um, TV exec should force. All right. Uh, but yeah, I'm all over that ECU Marshall final game this year, Florida Atlantic simple. Well, here's the thing, Florida Atlantic and Florida international final game of the year. I don't give a fuck that they're now in two different conferences. They're right there. They need to be playing unless if we paired UCF 
Actually, that might work better. If we paired UCF with Miami now, does Penn does Notre Dame? Yeah. What if we do that? UCF versus Miami every year. If we can get Miami to agree on that, which is a big fucking F, right? But if TV execs, I feel like UCF's gigantic fan base, they would be super excited for this game every fucking year. I know Notre Dame, Miami, but the Catholics convicts thing, for some reason, Notre Dame is on their high horse and they seem to have more power than almost every other fucking school. So what I am then proposing is South Florida versus Florida Atlantic, which then leaves FIU out in the open, right? And what do you do with Notre Dame? Well, I propose Penn state take on Notre Dame every fucking year. Final game of the season. Wouldn't that be fantastic? They've been playing. I mean, their first game they played was back in like 1912. It makes perfect fucking sense. And since Notre Dame, for some reason, won't play Miami, we get UCF Miami, the final game of the year, Penn state, Notre Dame. And now we have South Florida and Tampa going up against Florida Atlantic and Boca Raton, which is almost Miami. So you get the Tampa Miami thing going on <clears throat> and, and you got FIU the airport out to dry right now, but don't worry. We'll find a home for them. Um, fantastic. If I may say so fan fucking tastic. If I may say so, then as I mentioned, uh, Georgia state plays Charlotte They're in the Sun Belt, but Charlotte's in the AAC now. Um, then we hop down to who was the next AAC team. I'm getting used to the new AAC um, Memphis. Patty see if he was here, he would tell you this. You got to stay on the Mississippi river. And I thought about pairing Memphis with Missouri or, you know, Tennessee, which I think we should TV exec should force Tennessee and Memphis to play more often. Cause I think their numbers would be better than when Tennessee plays fucking ball state. Right. But Memphis against Tulane. They're both in the AAC. They're right on the fucking Mississippi River. This needs to be a better rivalry. This needs to be a better rivalry. I don't understand how it hasn't been. So get those two going. Mexi Melt says, Notre Dame can fuck off. Who cares? There we go. Yeah. And FAU versus FIU seems like a classic. I would still propose that Florida Atlantic has to play Florida International every year. Halloween weekend. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. Organize this thing. Let's do it right. If we're going to do it, do it. Uh, go, go the distance. What is he saying? Field, field of dreams. Go the distance. Um, other AAC schools. You have Navy. Well, here's an interesting one. Navy plays army, but it's, the, it's always like what? Like th- two or three weeks after the, uh, I think two weeks after the season finale, the final week. So you can kind of, Th- those are kind of teams you can schedule that are open Navy army. I personally would like them to play their FCS games probably that week. Um, I thought about entertaining the thought of, uh, of air force Navy those weeks. And I'll be honest, I've, I've made this case before in my opinion on Thanksgiving day, every fucking year before the lions game comes on, an hour before, try to beat them to the punch. You play Air Force versus Army, and you rotate who Air Force plays. So every Thanksgiving, we get Air Force, Army, or Air Force, Navy. And you rotate that every fucking year. I think your numbers would be fucking huge on that day. Yes, I know a bunch of people like the NFL, and a bunch of people would still watch the NFL. But a lot of people are connected to those two universities, and watching on you know, Thanksgiving would be fucking perfect. Be absolutely perfect. I didn't do that here because I don't think that's a reality because I think it, it takes away from the army Navy game some. So then what I would propose if they're, if they're not going to do that, move that game to uh veterans day every year, play that shit on a Monday night veterans day every fucking year. Let's go. Let's go. Um, other, uh, so I don't really have an answer for army is the answer, but it's two weeks after the fact. Um, jumping down to the other AAC schools, North Texas is new to the AAC this year. And they also haven't had much of a fucking football identity since fucking mean Joe green. All right. So that one was, was tricky. That was tricky. That was one where I ended up pairing them with Texas state 
San Marcos and Denton kind of to San Marcos. I think what closer to Austin Denton closer to Dallas. So you got a little something there. Um, not crazy about that game, but I, I had to fill a Texas school there. I'll tell you what else I did with the other Texas schools in a second. Uh, rice rice and UTEP. Look, I wanted to pair UTEP with UTSA, but I think the future at UTSA is so bright. They're going to steamroll UTEP. Give me UTSA UTEP on Halloween weekend every year. Right. But I think you got to go or, or shit. You might even do UTSA SMU Halloween weekend, but I think you got to go rice UTEP. They've been playing for a long fucking time. They've been playing for a long time. So you put that one there. I know it's not super exciting. I know UTEP has better rivals like New Mexico state and New Mexico, but <clears throat> I have them playing each other on the final week of the season. So um, then you jump down to SMU as I alluded to their TCU, but I don't even think SMU is in the AAC for that much longer. South Florida. We paired with FAU. Um, what else do we temple? Temples with Rutgers. All right. Shoe fucking fits. Tulane with Memphis. Shoe fucking fits. Tulsa. This is one. I actually thought this was going to be the hardest school to pair coming into this. But then I remembered Arkansas State doesn't really have a rival. They're in the Sun Belt. Yes, I know you can try to pair them with another Sun Belt team, but I say fuck that. I say Arkansas, Oklahoma kind of have a, a rivalry thing. You know what I mean? Arkansas and Oklahoma. They're bordering states. It's perfect. Tulsa, Jonesboro, this one. I don't know why this one. This needs to happen more. Tulsa and Arkansas State. That's that's your deal here. UAB. This one was tricky because they have two rivals. They have Troy and they have Southern Miss, and both are in the Sun Belt. But I think Southern Miss is the better rivalry for UAB. I just feel like they've been more respectable football programs over the long haul. And the rivalry has been a little chippier. So I went with UAB Southern miss there. Um, then you have a uh, UTEP. No, no, no. I'm sorry. UTSA. So what I did with UTSA, UTSA, actually that's one. I think I originally had them paired with Houston, but since we moved that to Houston, UTSA is one that needs a, needs a home. So we have FIU. UTSA Navy and army. Theoretically they play army every year. So that one kind of makes sense, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's keep that one on hold. All right. Then you have uh, and that's, that's that. I think that's, that's entire. That's the entire AAC. Then you move to the mountain West and the mountain West is intriguing to me because you have, well, first you have teams that probably going to be leaving soon and potentially Fresno state, Boise state and San Diego state, but definitely San Diego state. Um, but Boise state, who do you pair them with? So I have San Diego state with Fresno state because they're perfect. California's they're, They remind me of each other. Like not as far as location, if anything, they're very different as far as location, but the fact that they always have good football teams, they always have talent and they're kind of an easy, there were easy schools to get into that just do bad. So like it's, it just fits. It fits. Keep that one as the rivalry. Let that shit continue to grow. Cause I think they already have something there. So what do you do with Boise state? You could pair Boise state with Wyoming. I didn't do that. Even though I like that, that rivalry, maybe you play that one on Halloween every year. I paired Boise state with Utah state. There's just something two good football programs right there. Logan's up in what? Northern, Northern Utah up in the mountains. It's not that far, right? I mean, I actually feel like it's further than what I think, but it's not that far in general, right? Play that the final week of the season. Then, like I alluded to, New Mexico got to be playing the Battle of I-10, right? Or the Battle of I-40. What is that? Uh, New Mexico, New Mexico State, final game of the year every year. New Mexico State's an independent. This should be a fucking reality. This should be happening right now, all right? Shouldn't be that hard to schedule that. Then you have Hawaii. What'd you do with Hawaii? I paired Hawaii with San Jose state. Cause if San Jose state can't get San Diego state and Fresno state, they don't really fit. Like you could do a San Jose state Nevada thing, but Nevada has UNLV and that's one of the best trophies in all of college football for that big ass cannon. You got to have UNLV Nevada. If anything, 
it's a crime that UNL, UNLV Nevada hasn't been the final week of the year recently. They need to put that shit back because that's, that's a great, forget the name of that cannon, but it's fantastic. So I got Hawaii at San Jose state. They both have like, you know, I just feel like it fits San Diego state's colors. Oh, we're San Jose, you know, like California, Hawaii. It, it fits. I think, I think you build on that final game of the season every single year. Right? So then air force, what am I going to do with air force? If, if they can't play on Thanksgiving, which I want them to, and they should, or veterans day, make it happen. You got to pair them up. If, if you can't get that, then you have to pair them up with Colorado state Two in, in, in state rivals have been playing for a long fucking time. It makes a lot of sense. All right. Final week of the season, get that thing, get that thing done. Um, and I think, I think that's all of the, uh, that's all right there of the, uh, except Wyoming, Wyoming, we don't have a home for, right? So what are you going to do with Wyoming? Okay. Put them on the list, right? And I know we're going to get out of here soon, folks, but I um, wanted to talk base 10 more minutes on this, 10 more minutes and we're out. All right. And I hope this has been entertaining. If not, all good. It's just, uh, I, my thing is like, if we're cleaning up the sport and organizing it, because it's always been unorganized, that's actually been the beauty of it in a way, uh, then let's fucking do it right. Um, I say, so let's hop on over and I'll, I'll tell you the other, the other ones we have. I'll just go alphabetically here. Arkansas state. I told you I aligned with Tulsa Maction, Akron, Kent state. It already is. Don't touch it. That's your rivalry in the Mac. Um, app state. Look, app state was interesting because coastal Carolina, I feel like that's really emerged as a, a cool rivalry. And I think that's going to continue to grow. I think you move that thing to Halloween weekend every single year or, or that Wednesday or Tuesday. I think Georgia Southern, you know, they go back app and Georgia Southern have had a fucking rivalry for a long time. So you end it with those two teams playing each other every single year. The sport is better in my opinion. Uh, Ball state. I didn't really know what to do here. I'm kind of full of shit on this one, but I just paired him with another Mac school that needed a home Buffalo. I almost paired army with Buffalo, both to, uh, both in New York. I still feel like you could talk me into that, but Buffalo ball state. They're both in the Mac. That's all I got. Right. One of the weaker ones, Bowling green Toledo Maction. That one already, that, that already exists. That's a good rivalry. They've been playing fucking forever. So get that one going. Boom. That one makes sense. Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan. That one makes sense. Great rivalry. It's been playing since like fucking 1908 or something. 1902. One of the things that one's already there. Boom. Figure it out. Done. Right. Coastal Carolina. This is the one. So if I don't have coastal playing app, the final week of the season, who could I pair with coastal? I have them stepping out of the Sun Belt because they've played some classic games against Liberty. Liberty doesn't have a home. I found a home for Liberty and there's something hilarious about this matchup. You got Jerry Falwell's institution spends out of their ass against, you know, little Conway, South Carolina, the mullets. I mean, this is fantastic. I'll be honest. I, I entertained the thought of Liberty Houston every year. And I thought, man, it's just too far. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you'd have the, uh, <clears throat> Joel Alstein, you know, you got that angle, you know, you got the Houston, you know, and then the Falwell angle. I think that's fucking hilarious, but no, the fact that Liberty and coastal have played in some classics, they're not that far apart. I think you line up Liberty coastal every fucking year to end the season, every year to end the season, do it. Um, Eastern Michigan. We gave him central Michigan. Okay. Uh, Florida international. We need a home for, right. We need a home for, um, but that's one that, that would make sense. Like if you wanted to do UTSA army to end the season every year, army obviously got a huge presence in Texas. Um, and then Navy, Florida international Navy, obviously big presence in Jacksonville, Florida. So you could do that against FIU. I know it's not a sexy game, but just throwing that out there. Um, Georgia state, we paired with Charlotte and I think that one makes sense. Jacksonville state new to the FCA. Or I'm sorry. The FBS. That was a tough spot to find a home for, but I had Louisiana tech as an odd man out because I have ULM 
taking on Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, final game of the season every year. I think that should happen. So then what do you do with La Tech? They're kind of the odd man out. Well, Louisiana, Alabama, they're not far from each other. That's the rivalry. Jacksonville State, Louisiana Tech, talk to me. All right. Then James Madison, new to the FBS. They're in the Sun Belt and Old Dominion's right there. And that rivalry goes back some. Old Dominion, school rivalry, not necessarily football. School rivalry goes back some. So I like that one. Load up JMU, ODU, final game of the season every single year. Kent State with Akron, as I mentioned. Um, Liberty, Coastal Carolina. Marshall, East Carolina. Miami, Ohio. I almost paired them with Cincinnati, but I decided to do it with the Ohio Bobcats. This is uh, what do they call this again? Battle of the uh, Battle of the uh, Bricks, I think it is. This rivalry. So you're good. You're in good hands there with the rivalry. You play this on a Tuesday, Wednesday night. Absolutely fantastic. Um, then as you go down north, okay, this was the the one. Western Michigan. So Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan have been playing each other longer, and they they actually play on the last game of the season. That should stay. Western Michigan's kind of the odd man out here, but I feel like Northern Illinois is a perfect home for them because it, they're one of the, the biggest rivals as far as uh, historically it's not like they're tops, but I think it's the best you could do. You just cross the fucking lake, you cross the lake and you're there. That's a little bit of a stretch, but I feel like that's, that, that's doable. That's doable. You add, you, then you end up playing Western taking on central during, uh, during Halloween weekend. Then you have, Rice, Utah, I touched that. Sam Houston State. They're new. What are you going to do with them? I could pair them. Actually, that actually might make more. No, you could pair them with, uh, with UTSA, but I don't know. I feel like that might be disrespectful to UTSA. I paired them with North Texas. So there's that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I paired North Texas with uh, Texas State. So that's what it is. You do, Actually, that's, I, I should correct that. I should correct that. North Texas should be taking on. So Texas state should be taking on Sam Houston state every final game of the season. And North Texas should be taking on UTSA because they have a built-in rivalry. That's what it is. Solved fucking solved. Um, who else did I not touch on South Alabama? Well, they take on Troy. That already is their rivalry. Boom. You're good. Uh, and I, I actually think that's That's going to grow as a rivalry in general with or without my blueprint. Um, what else do we have here? UConn, UMass. That's simple. Every every fucking final game of the season, that should be the final game of the season. Fantastic. Um, and then uh, that's everybody. That's everybody. But Wyoming, I don't have one for Wyoming. So this is the one case, and I think it makes sense. So let's go ahead and write in Florida International versus Navy every year. Right? Florida International versus Navy. Wyoming is the odd man out. Here's what you do you play against. So there's an 11 game FCS season. It's not 12. Montana and Montana State could be in the FBS very soon playing 12. But even if not, Wyoming versus Montana needs to happen every fucking year arrange your schedules around that because that's a big check. You could be getting from an FBS and that should be your final game of the season for the Wyoming Cowboys. Talk to me. Tell me what you think about these ideas. We're going to be, we're going to be back talking, uh, talking, talking college football all year. All right. This is just a quick hour. I threw at you on what should be the final week of the season. And don't get me started. I do have, I've been building the blueprint on Halloween weekend. You know what I mean? Halloween weekend, you should have as your second route, like your Georgia, Florida's your, uh, uh, you know, uh, what Tennessee, Tennessee, Florida. I wouldn't mind. No, no, no. Georgia, Florida's Halloween weekend. Um, but the other games that we talked about, North Carolina, Virginia, the oldest rivalry in the South, both those should be, uh, occurring. I would actually love to see those back to back Halloween weekend, load those things up. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of other ones you should do on Halloween weekend. Uh, Florida state, Miami, West Virginia, Virginia tech, every Halloween. Come on. If you're going to do this, organize a Tennessee, Kentucky battle of the bourbon, um, wake NC state, Duke, North Carolina, uh, Virginia, Maryland, 
my I, and look and for for Halloween weekend, you get all those FCS games because that season's still going along. So load up Montana, Montana State, North Dakota State, South Dakota State, North Dakota, South Dakota. All those ones should be happening. North Carolina Central, North Carolina A and T. All those great FCS rivalries, Lehigh Lafayette. All those should be happening. Those 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 uh those Halloween weekends. Load it up. God damn it, I've been fucking. I'm a genius. All right. I feel like I'm a fucking genius. Um, I don't know. I hope I'm I'm actually optimistic that a lot of this is gonna actually happen naturally. Because I think the TV, if if we see the numbers, like I expect Colorado Nebraska to be like fucking seven million views this year, maybe even more, right? And then the TV execs are gonna say, What the fuck? Huh. This is way better than uh this is way better than when Nebraska takes on, you know, uh, whoever, you know, wh- whatever their normal game is. Right. Or when we see Utah BYU, which I don't think is happening for a couple of years, but when that happens, it's going to be like that. This game's a lot bigger than BYU Cincinnati, even though they're not in the big 12, let's make this game happen. That is going to happen. All right, let's go folks. Subscribe to the college football experience. And look, we're going to be back talking. How about how many QB battles we got in this spring going on? We don't even know who's starting really at Ohio state, Georgia, Alabama. When's the last time you can say that shit Ole miss has a, has a a interesting QB battle situation going on. We're going to be talking all of those, um, even LSU. So folks, uh, we're here to stay. Obviously we've been doing this shit for years here on the college football experience. So subscribe, tell a friend we're on, we're on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. And remember, uh, Please subscribe, Spotify, iTunes. We got you covered. That's that 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 really gets us paid. So please hop on over there. Give us a five star review. Also, college football experience. Come on, man. We haven't got one since like February. What's going? I know it's the off season. People are saying I'm phoning it in, saving my review to August. Help us out. Some decency in your heart. Give me a follow on Twitter at the Colby D. I also host the college basketball experience and the college baseball experience. Um, which once again on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Also, I host the USFL gambling podcast and the XFL gambling podcast. So check out both of those. And I'm a part of the sports gambling podcast. So check out that show as well. Cause they always doing great work there. And uh, look, we'll be back tomorrow. Talking more college football Wednesday. Obviously we have the week two preview. So, you know, buckle up as we got stuff going there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. All this gets me excited. Folks, until next time, this is the college football experience. I will see you tomorrow. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Run, shoot.